one of the biggest challenges with doing a Star Wars film is that every thing in the movie has to be designed. Everything from the forks and the tables to the costumes uh, to the dwellings they live in to the culture itself. What kind of a culture it is, what kind of artifacts do they have? And it's a very big job because every little minute detail has to be thought through. The design task for episode one was literally like designing five or six or seven films in that each world needed its own history and everything needed to be thought out. So like on Nebu, we have a very craftsman and sort of elegant look, whereas on Coruscant, we have a very angular and sort of concrete and metal look. Everything about these worlds needs to be distinct enough so that when George is intercutting between these different environments in the story, you know right away where you are visually, whether it's a texture of the material, the color of the material, or the look of the material. This looks like a stone and everything. I would you know, like make this thing crawl. Or, yeah, I try to tie it into the ship. One of our biggest challenges was to create a world that was very different, but yet still had very strong ties with the original Star Wars. And it was a very um, difficult problem in that we are exposed to so much in terms of movie designs nowadays that in order to come back and try to come up with something fresh is a very daunting task. The original designers, like Doug, sort of have full freedom to do whatever they want. And then I will sort of modify it. And then I work with Gavin even further to modify it to what is actually practical to do. It starts off as one idea, just gradually by discussion or sketches or showing ideas or reference photographs or location photographs. Just gradually the process moves towards something that's much more defined. So we could take this out yes. and then we can sort of dress, and use it for real, dress yeah. this with, with parts and yeah. whatnot, which would be great. What the, the cinematic dynamics of a particular design are is very, very important. Is, you know, how does it move through the frame? Uh, how does it show up on the frame? Uh, you know, dark ships on a dark sky don't work too well. For weathering, to see if this is the right amount, too much, not enough, what your general reaction is. The, the one thing that I would tone down a little bit is this. Okay, it's getting a little too dirty. Yeah. Okay. When we designed the um, Nebu Starfire, that was a, a very specific case because I initially thought that the ships would be very angular, like the X-Wing, but in fact we went the other extreme, which was you know, sleek and modern. So I started referencing um, 50s-style automotive um, hood ornaments. And from there, we kind of started expanding further on that design, taking the idea of take your sort of classic 50s rocket ship and updating it a little bit, putting you know, new materials on it and so forth. I think George really wanted to come up with a new idea because he didn't want to build something bigger than the last film um, to make a statement about bigness. I think he wanted something, a look that was really interesting. In designing the Gungan sub, George requested that it just be some kind of a unusual technology, but it still needs to look like a submarine of sorts and we deliberately designed it so that it's very organic. In Art Nouveau, by nature, it's sort of a very fluid form. And so the Gungan sub now has a very squid-like or manta ray feel where you have these semi-rigid organic propellers, yet it's powered by a fuel source that is unknown. That's one of the magics of, of designing for film is that you don't have to, you're not bound by reality. So you can design something that can be aesthetically pleasing and helps propel the story, but yet you don't have to explain, you know, where's the gas tank or where's the crew compartment and how big it has to be and so forth. So we're, in some ways we think about those things, but we don't dwell on them. The most difficult part of designing uh, for a film is to create a kind of immaculate reality. Uh, and that is doubly difficult when you're dealing with an environment that doesn't exist. Every set's a challenge. Uh, we never know quite how we're going to tackle it, but it kind of like all comes together, whichever way we decide to tackle it. The underwater one was the hardest because obviously underwater cities as such don't exist in any form. So George was very keen to use a sort of an Art Nouveau style on the sort of sculpted forms in there, just so there was a sort of um, a reference point. And in that environment, the audience does have something to sort of latch onto. Uh, subconsciously, maybe more than anything else. Star Wars is very plot driven. Every page, every minute and a half, you're onto a new set. So you have to instantly believe in it. Anakin's Hub was quite an interesting one because obviously it was back in Tatooine and George wanted it to have um, a certain feel of the homestead. 
his bedroom was something that George was saying, you know, let's make it like any nine-year-old kid's bedroom. But of course, he lives in Tatooine, which is kind of slightly different. It's not until you lay on your bed and you start to count all those different bits and pieces that you got there that go to make up your own set at home that you realize that you're actually recreating an environment like that, but in a completely different world. Sell me. Bye. Oh, my. The big issue always is that, that you're designing a lot of things that don't end up in the movie because you design a huge world and then you just use a small part of it. But uh, you're not really sure in the beginning what is going to get used and what isn't going to get used, so you have to think through everything. All the designs for the prequel is an incredible body of work. You can basically take all of our reject ideas and come up with a whole new different film. George's ability to take disparate images and juxtapose them together and create this reality that it becomes almost instant for everybody. They understand it immediately. It may be unfamiliar, but it's familiar in sense of its scale, its scope, and, and the fact that it is rooted in a sense of realism. I put forth a lot of challenges to people in this movie. Things in the beginning we had no way of knowing whether it was going to work. I was going out on a limb aesthetically in a lot of areas, especially in some of the designs of the sets and the props, you know, some of the vehicles. When you see the final movie, you're looking at really thousands of people who had a very direct creative influence on the movie, and I depended on a great deal to bring this galaxy into reality. 